Can the Arizona Cardinals follow in the Detroit Lions' footsteps? And we know where they're picking in the first round, finally. Let's discuss. You are Locked On Cardinals. Your daily Arizona Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Locked on Cardinals, Alex Clancy here. Follow me on Twitter at Clancy's Corner. Follow the podcast at Locked on AZ Cards. Thank you for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen free wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. So was this the second week, third week, second week without Cardinals football, but we're starting to figure out more and more about what their future looks like. How crazy is Monty Osford going to get in the 2024 draft? Discuss that in the final segment. The Cardinals finally know where they're picking, namely the Houston Texans pick that is now theirs. It's 27. What could 4-27 and look like? I'll tackle that in the second segment. I kind of want to just do a hard reset here for something that I've discussed for a while. And now, you know, obviously I'm not the only one, but um, I like to think that I was one of the first few that, that really compared the Cardinals to the Lions. And it started after the Lions' big win over the Cardinals a couple of years ago during their 10-2 and two start season. Where, first off, good teams don't lose games like that. I've discussed that in nauseam. That's not something that I'm going to, you know, open the can about again. But that was, you started to see the Detroit Lions team under Dan Campbell biting kneecaps. Nobody really, I mean, Let's be honest. Dan Campbell had an interim head coaching gig in Miami years ago. And then he was hired. I mean, former football player, former tight end to be head coach. And it was just like, let's see if this works. Because normally, and what it's been pretty much since their inception, save a couple Matthew Stafford years and a couple Barry Sanders years, was the Detroit Lions are just like the Arizona Cardinals. The doldrums of the NFL. So hiring Dan Campbell's like, obviously it's not going to work. It's never worked. Nothing's worked in Detroit. And then they start to win some games. Very, very, uh, you know, sporadic early on. And then two years ago, they beat Green Bay to keep them out of the playoffs in week 18, which was like this massive game. Jamal Williams with his, you know, his... uh, His vindication for them not re-signing him in Green Bay where he had that monster year. And then now they're playing in the NFC Championship game. And while the NFL, there's so much luck involved and not just balls bouncing the right way, anything like that. The draft is a crapshoot a lot of times. Most of the times, players who are drafted don't pan out to where, you know, their draft, what where their draft spot was. First round, it's like, it, it's such a crapshoot. Free agency, crapshoot. Roster building in general. Unless you've got somebody who really knows what they're doing, has good relationships around the league, and is elite at talent evaluation, like seemingly their, um, their new GM, Brad Holmes, is, It's difficult to make it work. And what the Lions have done is truly the unthinkable. They've pivoted. From everything we knew about the Detroit Lions, they pivoted. And that's not taking anything away from Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford had some great years there. They didn't win a whole lot of games. They didn't win any playoff games. He got screwed out of a win when Brandon Pettigrew didn't get the pass interference called on him. Everybody remembers that. Well, I do. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a sicko. Matthew Stafford had good years. Calvin Johnson was fantastic. Like, they've had good players. They've never been able to bring it together. They were 0-16 in 2008. 
That is a depth of hell that you never want any fans or employees of the organization to feel. Matt Millen was a terrible leader, a terrible executive. He was around forever. And then now, when you look at them, you see stability. You see good leadership. You see level-headedness. And you see functionality. And I think it's, it's unequivocally believed at this point. As functional as an organization, any company can be. And I'm not saying the Lions are, are the pillar. They're the dictionary definition of what you need to do to win. That's not what the Cardinals should be looking at. What the Cardinals should be looking at is how to get to that next level to build as close to perpetual relevancy as you can in this league. And it's difficult. I mean, the, the Ravens make it look easy. The Steelers make it look easy. The Chiefs now make it look easy. Even before Patrick Mahomes with Alex Smith, whenever Andy Reid went over, like he did the same thing in Philly. So there's a handful of teams that make it happen, like the 49ers now, but look at Kyle Shanahan's first three years as a head coach. Not a great win-loss record. But when you look at the Lions, it's a team that has never amounted to anything in this league. I mean, there's nothing absolute, but you know what I mean. And if the Cardinals can really just follow that guiding light, I think they're going to be fine. And I think they've got the right people in place to be able to make that happen. We have no idea what's going to happen in the future. We have no idea if Monty Osford just had a lucky draft. Usually that doesn't happen. And usually, I'm speaking to myself now, you don't get a built-in hall pass for an entire year without any sort of true gavel coming down like, why aren't you winning more games? And the Cardinals got one last year. Kyler Murray was out for a large chunk of the season. It was a bunch of young guys. They played more rookie snaps than any other team in the NFL. There was a lot of practice squad players that were playing. Injuries, everything. They just got a pass. So it was all abstract. I spoke in the abstract. Every day, as you know, I've spoken in the abstract this entire year. Future pacing things, future pacing things. And it's not with a built-in excuse. It's with this is where they are. It's not up for interpretation. They're a young team without their quarterback, new head coach, new coordinators, new GM bunch of new players, a bunch of players who aren't going to be on the roster next year. And you're going to find out who your stars are. You need to see who the guys you can trust moving forward. And they did that as well as humanly possible, especially with the offense playing at such, you know, a heightened level when Kyler Murray came back, namely the past few, uh, the, uh, the last couple of weeks of the season. So what the Cardinals need to do, and you have, sure, you have the Dave Sears assistant GM uh, tie between Detroit. He came over from Detroit last season. If you told me that the Cardinals nailed the 2024 draft and free agency, obviously because free agency comes first, and they win eight games next year, and they're a playoff team the year after, that would be the exact path of the Detroit Lions. There's a couple things the Detroit Lions did. They found Amon Ross St. Brown in the third round, I think which is like if Michael Wilson can be 70% or 80% of Amon Ross St. Brown, that's a win. They drafted Penny Sewell and Aiden Hutchinson in back-to-back drafts, offensive line, defensive line. And I know that there was no Marvin Harrison Jr. Well, there was, but he was taken right before with Jamar Chase from Cincinnati. Like, they did it the boring way, the non-sexy way, the eat-your-vegetables way. They traded for Jared Goff. They got an extra first-round pick. And they slowly but surely added veterans in key spots and continued to move forward and look at where they are now. They're sitting at the NFC Championship game, one, one game away from the Super Bowl. I know in a world of I want it now, it's harder to stomach that Kyler Murray on his big money deal and – you know, Buda Baker getting a little bit older and there being a lot of question marks about the roster and things like that. Well, you got it's got to happen now. 
or it's a failure. Stop it. Let things happen organically. Let like Monty Osfort needs to just have implicit trust given to him at this point. First of all, the Cardinals don't have a choice. Or the you know, fans, media members, whatever. It's that's that's where they are. And the Detroit Lions are exactly what needed to be shown to the Arizona Cardinals that hey, you can do it too. And this isn't taking away from you know the Bruce Arians years at three, ten, and six years, okay? Or the 11 6 Cliff Kingsbury, you know, whatever the 11 6 Cliff Kingsbury. But those were bringing a bunch of vets and just hope it happens. David Johnson, hope it happens. All those things. This is the organic way of making things happen. And if the Cardinals can follow the mold of the Detroit Lions, they're going to be in pretty good shape. Locked on Cardinals, your team every day, Alex Clancy. Um, we know where the Cardinals are picking at 4 and 27. What does that look like? We'll discuss it next. We're all on here. Locked on Cardinals. Your team every day. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is brought to you by LinkedIn. At the start of the new year, we're almost through January. Every small business owner is asking themselves the same question. What's the one move I can make that will take my business to the next level in 2024? And LinkedIn Jobs knows your success all depends on the team you surround yourself with. That's why LinkedIn Jobs has created the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn's, LinkedIn isn't just another job board, man. They've got a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. Hiring is easy when you, have that many, when you have that many quality candidates. So, I mean, it's so easy, in fact, that 80%, 86% even, a small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn Jobs also knows that you know small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have time or resources to hire. So thankfully, with LinkedIn, the process is intuitive, quick, and easy. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnNFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnNFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. The Detroit Lions story is fascinating. Like, it's almost – you know how I, I said last week, if you didn't, you should go listen to the podcast every day or, or if this is your first listen to Locked on Cardinals, thank you. I talked about how the Cardinals should be rooting for Kansas City to lose, even though deep down nobody really thought they were going to, uh, because that would spring the possibility of Chris Jones, you know, becoming a free agent, um, putting a little, uh, you know, update on that. Now you hope they win a Super Bowl, because if they win another one, then Chris Jones may go elsewhere to get paid. He's got a $33 million franchise tag that they have the option for, but that could be beneficial for the Cardinals. Now you just hope Kansas City goes all the way and wins. With the Lions, you just – it gives – it's like a, a kindred spirit, a twin flame. What are those things? I don't know. That's not really my area of expertise or knowledge base, but the more the Lions play well – the better blueprint it gives for the Cardinals, in my humblest of opinions. It may sound dumb. I just think that especially with, again, look at the look at the win-loss record all time for both of those teams. If the Lions can do it, so can the Cardinals. The Cardinals now know where they're picking. So all of these things can start to continue to snowball as we, you know, exit the purgatory that really was 2023 pertaining to adding talent to the roster, things like that. They completely punted on free agency last year as part of the two-year plan to, you know, thrust back in to relevancy. Now comes the action. We got free agency. We're going to find a lot about the draft theory and the draft me draft methodology of Monty Austin for it with what he does during free agency. Now, obviously, free agency is – you don't have a whole lot of control over who you want to add, what pieces you want to add veteran wise, because a lot of it is out of control. The money that somebody, the market value for a player, what players are available, what positions are available, the current construct of the Cardinals, you know, roster, things like that. But, you know, say the Cardinals go after, say just for example, like to add for synchronicity with the last show, say they go after Chris Jones and they want to pay him big money. Okay. And they go after, you know, one of the top corners. And they pay that player good money. And you add a couple veteran linebackers, pass rushers, things like that. Because, you know, 
I've discussed this some, you know, in, in some depth. And I will when free agency really, really kicks off. But you can find B minus two B plus pass rushers for not as much money as it used to be, which is good, which is what I think the Cardinals will most likely do. I don't see them paying the top pass rusher when they have so many other, you know, important needs. And you can also target pass rush in the draft. So we're going to find out a lot about what Monty Oswald's theory is and an outlook on the draft with the amount of draft, uh, cap space they have beforehand. Uh, this is all still so speculative because we're still so early. It hasn't even started yet. But we know they're picking 4th and 27th. What does that mean? I've started to do some mock drafts. Uh, I don't think – like mock drafts are fun. They're fun to discuss. But I think still going in the – abstract and not as concrete with names. It's more about what path you want to take. And I understand Ma Marvin Harrison Jr. is the apple of everybody's eye at four for the Cardinals. I find it very hard to believe that he won't be there at four. Well, you know, the commanders might know they won't. The Patriots might know they won't. Unless for some reason, Chicago sticks with Justin Fields. Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to be there at four for the Cardinals. And if they didn't stick with, if they didn't draft Caleb Williams, they would have just draft Marvin Harrison Jr. at one. So Marvin Harrison Jr. is four. Okay, so say he's, that's it, and that's the pick. The Cardinals are now behind. While he will add incredible value, and the fact that he dropped the four when he could have gone number one overall in multiple drafts, depending on, you know, how stacked the quarterback class is, the Cardinals are then behind. Because they still need offensive line, defensive line, pass rush, probably another off-ball linebacker, and like three corners and a running back. That's six positions. Now, running back obviously isn't important as wide receiver, especially in this day and age. They've still got their RB1, but they're going to need to draft a guy who can touch the ball 40% of the time. If it's Michael Carter, if they have to go out and get somebody in free agency or through the draft. So they've got so many other positions that they need to fill. If they drafted Ford, that's fine. That's a clear indicator that they took best player available and not biggest need, which is fine. That's what you do towards the top of a draft. I get it. And you got to catch up quick. So my thought is there are like two or three paths. One, you draft Marvin Harrison Jr. And then you draft need with 27. Super easy, super clean. If it's Kool-Aid McKinstry, if it's, you know, another corner, there's a, another corner that's supposed to be there that his name's escaping me. I think he goes to Missouri. I think he played in Missouri. Um, you can draft a left guard there because I think there's 24 offensive linemen like in the in the top, top that, that could go in the first two rounds. And it's, the Cardinals are going to have to figure out, like, this is where the Monty Ossifort and Jonathan Gannon heavy ties into scouting Dave Sears also. You got to pick, you got to pick the right one. You got to draft the right one. You can't miss. This has to be a perfect draft. If the Cardinals want to continue down this road of young talent, infusing free agents, and really starting to, you know, pivot back into relevancy here. So that's number one. You draft... Marvin Harrison Jr., and then the best player in a position of need. Luckily for the Cardinals, they need everything. So if it's an interior defensive lineman, cool. If it's an edge rusher, cool. If Kool-Aid McKinstry is there and other corners there, cool. And then you have four picks between 34 and 96, and you just go. Okay, so that's one. Two... And, and I know this is becoming, you know, less and less real here. You draft somebody else besides Marvin Harrison Jr. And I just don't, I just don't see it happening. I mean, you got Joe Alt, you got Olu Fashionu, Notre Dame, Penn State, big boy football programs with big boy offensive linemen. And you have your bookend to Paris Johnson Jr. for the next decade plus. And then... You draft the apple of my eye, Troy Franklin, out of Oregon, who had better numbers. I know that the offense was a lot better at Oregon. He had better numbers across the board than Marvin Harrison Jr. last year. I know that's not a serious fair. I'm just, that's just a factual statement. Troy Franklin's great. 6'2", six, 6'3", six, six, 180. He'll put on weight when he comes to the NFL. 
You get your outside. He runs a 4 3 5 40. He's my guy. And he'll be there at 27, most likely. So that would be my choice. Um, and there's a third one that I'll talk about on the other side of the break, which would be crazy. And it begs the question how crazy is Monty Osler going to be throughout the draft, even if it's a stick and pick at four? I'll discuss that next. You don't want to miss this. Lockdown Cardinals, your team every day. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is brought to you by FanDuel Playoffs, Conference Championships. It's here. Get in on the action of FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. And the app is super easy to use. There's so many different ways to bet, like Live same game parlays. You can find bets in the new Explore tab. You can make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays. If you want to pick Super Bowl champion, if you want to pick conference champion, if you want to pick whatever it is, FanDuel's got you covered all the way throughout. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official part of the NFL. Final segment, thanks for hanging out. Um, thanks for making Lockdown Cardinals your first listen. Please go to the YouTube channel. Cracked 3,000 subscribers this past, uh, a week ago. Thank you so much. This has been a long, long journey of just happiness for me. Even though I'm not always speaking the most highly or most positive about the team that which this podcast is surrounded, by which, I don't know, grammar aside, Thanks for being a part of it, truly. And if you, if you don't subscribe to the YouTube channel, just go do it. Hit subscribe, turn notifications on, uh, leave a comment. Um, DM me on Twitter. I'm still getting more and more DMs every week. Please continue to do that because if you if there's a topic you want discussed, especially this off season, I'd be happy to talk about it. I will always have enough to talk about, and I want to make this as much of your podcast as it is mine. So please, at Clancy's Corner on Twitter. I don't do it for follows. I don't care. Just send me a DM, ask a question. I'll pop it into a segment or half a segment, depending on the question it is. Happy to do it. How crazy is Monty Osborne going to get? Let's talk about the third option that I, that, I mean, that's on the table. Is the Cardinals trade back from four? And this is the crazy one. The chance of this happening is not big. The only thing that I can think about potentially happening is two things. One, the Chargers, they hire their new head coach. And that new head coach wants Marvin Harrison Jr. To pair with Justin Herbert, to pair with an aging Keenan Allen and always hurt Mike Williams and Austin Eckler, who had his worst year in the last couple of years. Justin Herbert is going to need a wide receiver one. So will Kyler Murray. I completely understand. This is this is an exercise for options at four. I'm not saying which one's the best. I'm just saying there are three options. I discussed the first two last segment. And then trading back is an option because any pick, if offered enough, is up to trade. So, I, you know, I, I put this out on Twitter a few weeks ago. And, and this was, again, this was just an exercise. If the Arizona Cardinals get offered a first rounder in 2025 to move back one spot, would you do it? If the Cardinals get offered a second this year and a second next year to move back from four to five, would you do it? The Chargers need their wide receiver for the future. And maybe they'd overpay. Draft picks are the most overvalued thing in sport. So say the card say the Chargers, like, listen. Marvin Harrison Jr. is worth the first this year and the first next year, and they offer it. How do you not take that? That's how you build generational relevancy. Generational in the NFL is what, five years, seven years? I think that's a, you look yourself dead in the mirror and be like, how bad is Marvin Harrison Jr.? Like how much, how much is, is that player worth for the, 
you know, for the future of this team, or would you rather have two first round picks? So the trade back scenario is three percent. I mean, unless Marvin Harrison Jr. gets drafted in the top three, in that case, the Cardinals should one hundred percent be open for business because they need so many positions. That's like a so say Marvin Harrison Jr. goes in the top three. You don't care at that point. Trade back as far as you can. Build up capital because, because yes, it would be nice to have one of the top two tackles. If you move Paris Johnson Jr. over, you can draft a right tackle. And you can draft a defensive line. You can draft a corner. You can draft another receiver. You can, you can go wherever you want. And you draft the best pass rusher. The Cardinals are in a very interesting position because now Jaden Daniels seems to be the third. I've, I've said this entire season, you just hope the Car- there's a third one. Caleb Williams, Drake, I mean, you just hope there's a third one that makes that fourth overall pick look even better in case something Looney Tunes happens. So the Marvin Harrison Jr. trade back, like maybe the Chargers are cool with um, Malik Neighbors and they just want to draft him. Not all wide receivers are the same. Malik Neighbors had a good year. They had a terrible defense, great offense. He scored a whole bunch of points. Marvin Harrison Jr. had a terrible quarterback. He still put up 14 touchdowns and almost 1,400 receiving yards, 65, 67 receptions. And he was wild what he did with, with the quarterback that he had. But the trade back is just something that needs to be you know discussed. How crazy is Monty Oswald going to get? I'm going to take the last three or four minutes on this on, on this show to take the information that we have now from what he did last year. Within the course of like 20 minutes, 25 minutes real time last, last year, he traded back to 12 and back up to six. And didn't have to give up the future first that he had gotten 30 minutes prior to trading back down to 12. He just gave the team they traded the second round pick that they just got from Houston. Just like that. So the Cardinals have 427. They've got their second round pick, which is towards the top, obviously, of the second round. And they've got three third round picks. If the Cardinals draft Marvin Harrison Jr., which is most likely what they'll do barring anything crazy, how aggressive will Monty Osiford be? Because he's got the tools in his toolbox to be able to do it. I find it incredibly difficult to believe that the Cardinals will stay and draft all three of those picks in the third round. I find it very, very difficult to believe. With that, It opens up the floodgates for everything. Could you see the Cardinals packaging 27 a second next year and one of their thirds this year to move up into the top 15? Sure. Could you see the Cardinals packaging 27 and their second rounder this year to open in the top 12 or 13 and one of their thirds? Like how much about this is roster building in 2024 for the draft and how much of it is building roster depth? How much of it is getting the stars you can and how much of it is you're going to go deep in free agency. You're going to add a bunch of players on one or two year deals with the money they have, the draft and the cap space they have. And how much of it, you're going to draft as many young players as you can and find the stars. Because if it's the latter, maybe they'll just stick. I find it hard to believe that Monty Osford is going to pick three times, you know, between 67 and 96. I find it very hard to believe. Third round picks are where gems are found. And if the Cardinals really want to make an impact this draft, this year, they have the draft capital for 2020, 2024 and 2025 to make it happen. I'm not saying you're trading your first round pick in 2025, but if you can make a package going from 27 up to you know top 15 and giving up 27, a third this year and a second next year, I think it's definitely something that needs to be discussed. Because if you target a guy, especially an offensive lineman, that you know is going to be the guy or a corner that you know is going to be the guy, or an interior defensive lineman or pass rusher that you know is going to be the guy with their extensive history in scouting him, Gannon, and Dave Sears alike. And you can go get your guy now. That's a lot more important 
than a future second round pick. I am so excited to see what Monty Osborne does in the 2024 draft as, you know, the uh, his second year. It's going to be incredibly fascinating. I know we've got free agency before. I know that a lot of the tea leaves will be read through free agency with what they're looking at towards the draft, especially the positions they want to draft. And I wish it was tomorrow. <laughs> but guess what? I will talk to you tomorrow. Alex Nancy, Locked on Cardinals. Remember, without me, without you, there is no me. I'll talk to you tomorrow.